a young girl in a village without protection HAH and every one one of them is strange she let out a long sigh as she threw the BO data and the investigation reports onto the table. These were proposals for an arranged marriage. One has a mother complex, the other hates children. And this one point EWW, this one slaughters pets and other animals. I don't believe this, this one's the worst. The alluringly beautiful girl was in a terrible mood. She had beautiful white hair, which was braided at the front and beautifully tied up with a ribbon at the side. Her beautiful big, baby pink eyes gave her a lovely appearance. Her dress was made with laces, and matched her delicate personality perfectly. Contrary to her appearance, she let out some sloppy language. She was almost doll-like. Celeste in a wrinklet. She was a 16-year-old girl who still had memories from her past life. There were a total of 17 BO data sheets on the table. All the men were from noble families. Unfortunately, she couldn't decide who to pick. At least if the were poor, she could happily jump into their arms. She at least wanted someone who was poor, so that she could see what else they had to offer. There was no way that she could fall in love with these kinds of men. I'm the daughter of Marquis, therefore I have no intention of denying a political marriage but I'm sure that there has got to be something better than this. I absolutely hate disastrous promises. While roaring, she reached out for the papers once again. The BO data had all of their pictures, names, personal history, hobbies, etc but she had also separately got an investigation done. Unfortunately, none of them matched with the data that was provided on the BO data. The BO data only had data that they wanted to show off and lies. Even so, she still wanted to get married. But she didn't want a loveless marriage, moreover. There wasn't a single guy that interested her. She hated this. It would be great if she could find love through an arranged marriage, but she didn't see a single guy that she thought she might come to love. She slumped back onto the sofa. The daughter of the Marquis was no slop. Even if she says that, there was no one here to see her right now. What should I do? As soon as she said that, there was a knock on the door. Is that Anna? Celestina sat up straight on the sofa and gave the person knocking permission to enter. As expected, the one who entered was her maid, Anna. Celestina corrected her rough expression from earlier and smiled cheerfully at Anna. What happened? Anna? I've brought the last bio data and investigation report. Thank you. As Anna handed over the documents to Celestina, she started to speak with concern. Lady Celestina, you are Lord Soratex Fian Cave and so, isn't doing something like this wrong? Since you ordered me to, I prepared the files, but as I thought why, was Celestina looking around for arranged marriage candidates, and it just couldn't stop wondering. If everything goes well, Celestina and Soratek would soon be married and there would be nothing more to worry about. That's what Anna thought, so she certainly found Celestina's behavior to be very strange. I'm sorry for bothering you. No. That's right. Even though Celestina was looking through BO data, she already had a fianche. Moreover, he was the crown prince of this country. Celestina said with a small sigh, point because this engagement will soon be broken. Since she said it in a very small voice, Anna didn't hear it. That's right. This engagement would end soon. He is supposed to marry a beautiful woman who is also very popular. He would soon fall in love with the heroine, rendering Celestina into a burden. This hadn't taken place yet but it was certain to happen in the future. For that reason, she was searching for marriage partners that she could wed after their engagement ended. Anna looked at her worriedly and asked. Lady Celestina, you've always longed for Lord Soratek haven't you? Yes, that's right. Then there is no problem is there? 
Lord Soratek will certainly cherish you. Selesina responded to Anna's statement with a lifeless nod. Anna, can you bring me some fresh tea? Point certainly. Once the maid had left the room, she once again looked at the documents on the desk. But they looked up immediately. She looked around to confirm once again that this was certainly the room of the backquote villainous Celestina Inklet. Rose red colored curtains and rose patterned carpet. As if to point out that this was a room in a Marquis household, high quality white furnishings adorned the room. There is a table in between two sofas. The bedroom is prepared separately, and behind it is a dressing room. She stood up and looked out of the window that overlooked the balcony. She could see the main gate, which was about 300 meters away. There were two rose gardens and a fountain in the center. It was a fitting mansion for a villainess. This world is from a very famous fantasy game from girls in Celestina's previous life, the maiden from Asgeral. Celestina was a Japanese in her previous life who lived her life as a gamer, when one day she was transported into her favorite game. In reality, this would have made her ecstatic, but the problem was the character that she was reborn as. The Villainous, Celestina Inklet. Celestina regained the memories of her past life when she was 6 years old. After a raging fever for 3 days and 3 nights, the only thing that she knew was that her beloved Soratek would end their engagement. But the heroine may not choose the Soratek route. It was small, but there was still a possibility. But it won't just become easier because of that. The worst part is that the current root of the game is progressing towards the root of the Crown Prince Soratek. It's easy to tell why I know that. A few days back at Soratek's birthday party, he wore a pink tie. This was proof that we were progressing towards the Soratek route. Celestina slumped back on the sofa, since Anna wasn't in the room. To think that I'm finally engaged to my favorite character and I've broken up with him, that's really sad. But there is something even more important than that. That's the ending of this game. There are two endings available on the Soratek route, the happy ending, and the hard ending. That may seem obvious, but it's not something to be ignored. First one, the heroine and Soratek will be in love with each other, and it will a happy ending. The engagement will be broken. Celestina will be banished from the country for bullying the heroine. Second one, if the love level of Soratek and the heroine is low, the villainess will poison the two of them to death out of jealousy. In this case, she'll be caught as the criminal and executed. Both are bad. But if I had to choose one then I would rather be friends with the two of them, and let them have their happy ending. Even if I'm Celestina, I don't wish to die. Moreover, I cannot imagine Soratek dying. I don't wish to think of that. I really don't think that I would be overcome with jealousy to kill the two of them. Regretfully, this is the world of a game. Maybe there is some kind of power that ensures that the events follow the storyline. Maybe my body will move to do certain things without my will. I'm terrified when I think of that. Just by imagining it, chills were running up my spine. It's alright. My beloved Lord Soratek certainly won't let me die. That's why Celestina was searched for new FNK candidates, so that Soratek and the heroine can live happily ever after. However, there weren't any good marriage candidates. Celestina and Soratek were engaged to each other at the age of 5. They were young and adorable with a bright future ahead of them. But the reality was different. Because I'm not the heroine that was promised happiness. At least it's natural to wish for Soratek's happiness right. Well, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't jealous of the heroine. No, I'm probably really jealous of the heroine. I regained my memories at 6, and I'm 16 right now. How many times have I wailed about the fact that I'm not the heroine? When I thought 
that I had finally sorted out my feelings. The story started following the Soratek route. I really wanted to cry. No, 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 no I'm alright. I always wondered what I'd do if the story follows the Soratek route. Celestina was shaking her head to get rid of her feelings so that she wouldn't cry. It's alright. I don't have any lingering feelings for Soratek. Asterisk BAM asterisk there was a loud sound as she slapped herself across her cheek. For that reason, I'm searching for a FMK candidate tool. If there are only pathetic men out there then there is no meaning it's alright. No matter what happens, I'll celebrate the marriage of Soratek and the heroine happily. As I kept telling myself over and over that I could do it point there was a knock on the door once again. Please enter, I said thinking it's Anna who had returned with tea. But the one who entered was my FMK Soratek. Eh, I didn't hear that he was coming. For a moment she only blinked and then quickly stood up. She smiled at Soratek as she was wondering what was happening. Lord Soratek, welcome. I wasn't aware that you would be coming, so I'm a little surprised. Ah, I'm sorry for the sudden visit. I had some urgent work with the Marquis. Is that so? My mother's health has been bad since last night and hence my father couldn't make it to the castle. As she began to explain, Soratek cheerfully replied that he already knew. Even so, for Lord Soratek to come over personally it wouldn't have been unreasonable for you to call him over though. I tried to apologize for the fact that the crown prince himself had to come over. I was a little curious and empathetic. Ah. It's alright since I could use this opportunity to meet my fiancé. That's why it's better that I came here instead of calling the Marquis. Lord Soratek. Hearing him say something like that, Celestina was shocked. Thank you for coming to my birthday banquet. As I had thought, that color really suits you Celestina. The color of the baby pink dress that you gifted to me right? Yes. It's the same color as your eyes and it lovely with your white hair right? Once he said that Sora Tech ran his fingers through Celestina's hair. Her hair is well maintained and very silky. It sways lightly as he passes his fingers through her hair. Seeing Sora Tech touching her hair so happily, she leaned her head a little. Ah, ha. Huh. Haven't you already started to get captured by the heroine? I'm sure that's the case. Then why are you speaking so kindly to me, smiling at me and touching me? I thought that you weren't interested in me at all. I guess it's because the game has just started, so he hasn't come to like the heroine too much yet. Does that mean that Sora Tech will start to become colder from here on? I would hate that. Celestina shook her head lightly in order to forget that. The game's capture target, Sora Tech Lily Alvord. He had beautiful sky blue colored hair. Some of it framed his face and the rest was tied at the back. A strong willed man with deep blue eyes. He wore a black suit with a brilliant red tie. His well balanced features are exactly like him. It makes it easy to see why he is the capture target of a fantasy game for girls. Celestina loves the kind smile that he usually her, but that will soon be directed towards the heroine. The crown prince of the Alvid Empire and Celestina's childhood. At the moment he is still my fiancé. But soon he'll be a former fiancé or ex-fiancé. Soratek noticed Celestina's gaze and smiled questioningly. Backquota, how cool. Celestina screamed in her mind, but cheerfully responded to him saying that it's nothing. She was just appreciating his beauty, even though they weren't really connected anymore. Come to think of it, Anna will soon come in with tea. Let's sit down on the sofa Celestina was about to guide him to the sofa, when she suddenly became anxious. The details of the arranged marriage candidates were resting on top of the table. Even if she was to break up with Zora Tech soon, 
This would really not bode well. Back quote damn. I need to clear them out somehow. Even though she quickly gathered herself, so that Sora Tech wouldn't be able to notice, Sora Tech instantly seemed to become a little suspicious. Cell, what is that? UMM point it doesn't concern Lord Sora Tech, it's related to the territory. Even if it was to deceive him, there was no way that she could lie to him like that. Please don't mind it. She said cheerfully, but he extended his hand out without saying anything. Back quote ah, uh, it means that he wants me to hand them over right. It's not a good idea to ruin the mood of the crown prince. But it's worse to hand over the documents. Back quote what should I do? Her body froze as she was wondering what to do, when a low voice called out. Cell. Point understood. He left her with no choice, but to hand over the documents to him. She resigned to her fate as she handed the documents over to him. Sora Tech looked through all the documents as he slowly stopped smiling till he was expressionless. I, I'll, go check on Anna. Soon she should be bringing tea. Cell. Ye, yes it would have been a good idea to leave this room right now, but looks like he wouldn't let me escape. These are the documents of the territory? I can only see BO data and investigation reports for potential candidates for arranged marriage though. A point out, that's right isn't it? That's right. As she obediently nodded, Sora Tech asked her coldly. She wasn't able to think of anything at the moment as she those blue eyes spoke to her. Cell, do you know that you have a fianché? Didn't she have an escort to the evening party? He seemed to ask. How could she forget? He gave her a baby pink dress, they entered the hall together, and shared a dance. Celestina looked away, and replied with wavering eyes. Yes for now, Lord Sora Tech is my fianché. For now? Point R. Damn, she made a mistake. She immediately brought palms to my mouth, but it was useless, since she had already spoken. She looked away, and wondered what she could do now. But Sora Tech moved before that. He threw the documents onto the table. When I looked into his eyes, they were furious. So these are the kind of men you prefer? He pointed to the guy with the mother complex and Celestina quickly shook her head in protest. Then, this one? He's 50 and you're 16, so he's even older than your parents though. No, never back quote it's not me that wants to break the engagement. It's going to be you, Lord Soratek. So there is no reason for you to be so angry. Celestina thought. If I think about what to do after Lord Soratek decides to break his engagement with me then it'll be too troublesome. Am I supposed to be miserable after marrying a man that I don't even like with a BO data like that after you break up with me? Back quote I also want to be happy. But honestly, speaking you have a lady that you like already right? Why haven't you told me about it? Back quote but isn't this a good development for Lord Sora Tech? The one to wants to end the engagement with Celestina quickly and marry the heroine, Sora Tech. The one who wants to quickly find a new partner for marriage after the engagement is broken, Celestina. The reason why Celestina wants to quickly find a new marriage partner is that she doesn't want to worry the Marquis and Sora Tech who will be married to another girl. If the girl he broke up with cannot marry again and lives an unhappy life then Sora Tech will also feel guilty right? Back quote but it would surely be difficult to break an engagement without reason. It's absolutely necessary, a reason to break the engagement. The fact that Sora Tech fell in love with another girl is not a good enough reason. Back quote even so, I cannot break the engagement with the crown prince from my end. If there is a good reason, the engagement can be broken, but we obviously cannot do something about it from our side, because it's the royal family. So if you get along well, 
It's meaningless to be engaged from childhood. Celestina is the Marquis's daughter, the heroine is the Earl's daughter, so it doesn't make sense to break it. Fortunately, though, Sorotek has a good reason for breaking his engagement to Celestina. That's also the reason why Celestina is the villainess. I'm an incomplete person who hasn't even received the blessings of the spirits or the gods. I'm isn't good enough for a person who has the blessings of the war god Thursday. Cell, are you still concerned about that kind of a thing? Everyone who is born into this world gets the blessings of the gods and the spirits. Celestina was the only exception. The beautiful Valenus who was abandoned by the gods, that is who Celestina was. This world is called Asgeral. Asgeral had a large temple in its center and five countries surround it. When children turn six years old, they are taken to pray at the temple, and are bestowed with divine blessings in return. The blessings are usually given by the four great spirits. The spirit of fire salamander, the spirit of water undine, the spirit of wine sylph, and the spirit of earth gnome. It's rare to receive blessings from the gods that stand above the spirits. Amongst them, the sun god Saul, the moon god Mani do give their blessings more often. It's extremely rare to receive blessings from gods other than those. For example, the god of fertility free, the god of wise men Mimmel, or the god of war Thursday. They rarely give blessings and only a few people in history have been recorded to have received their blessings. It's sometimes said that they don't give their blessings to more than one person per generation. Even the god of war who blessed Sorotek has hardly given his blessings to a few kings in history. Depending on the kind of blessings you receive, your attribute value will be enhanced. If you receive blessings from the spirit of earth gnome then you'll be more skilled as a gardener with work that involves the earth. Keeping that in mind, people usually decide their future. Basically, blessings are bestowed upon every person. They should be bestowed upon every person. I'm sure that there is no one else in this world other than me who hasn't even received blessings from the spirit so mark appears somewhere on your body once you receive the blessings. That's how you confirm that you have received the blessings. For example, the back of the hand, abdomen, back, thighs, etc. It could be anywhere. Celestina thought that her mark might be in a place where it's difficult to see, so she scrutinized her entire body, but she couldn't find it. It's considered bad if one doesn't receive blessings. So I guess she was lucky that she wasn't abandoned. As soon as Celestina said that, Soratek was pursing his lips. Soratek's mark was at the back of the hand that holds the sword, the right hand. He looked at his mark and looked back at Celestina sadly. I didn't choose you, based on whether you had received blessings or not. I've always told you, haven't I? Point yes. I do understand your kindness very well. Then why? Why do you say something like that? Please don't say something so lonely. Soratek seemed to tell Celestina as he hugged her. Celestina could hear her heart beating fast, but she seemed to be calming down. Right now he seems to really cherish me, but soon affection will extend towards the heroine. Celestina didn't say anything and Soratek let out a sigh. Even if you haven't been blessed point I'll protect you so it's fine. A. Hearing those words, Celestina looked up at Soratek. She inclined her head and looked at him. Lord Soratek? No, it's nothing. Anyway Celestina, there is no reason for you to search for Fianke candidates. But still. You're my Fianke. So don't do those kinds of things. After hearing Soratek's words she paused. Backquote that's right, our engagement hasn't been broken, yet so it wouldn't be good to do this. It wouldn't be good if any kind of discontent or rumor spread through the country because of this, and tarnish his image, so she obediently apologized to him. 
Back quote I'll leave the search for a new FMK after my engagement with Soratech is broken. Once Celestina nodded in agreement, Soratech let out a sigh. But he hadn't realized that the two of them were thinking of slightly different things. After Soratech left, Celestina was thinking about the game and Soratech. There were a lot of things that she needed to do, but there wasn't enough time. Anyway, she was banned from searching for a new FMK by her current FMK, Soratech. Even so, it was pretty difficult to find a FMK candidate for Celestina. Point who would marry a person like me who hasn't received divine blessings. There wasn't a good enough candidate in those documents, bio data and investigation reports, that Soratech confiscated from her today. What is going to happen to Lord Soratech and the heroine? The heroine was the Earl's daughter, and had received the blessings from the God of Fertility Free. The mark is supposed to bring about good harvest and prosperity to the country, she was appropriate to be the queen. Well, it's not like I can receive divine blessings, even if I wish for it. She was prepared for her engagement to be broken, but she didn't want to live miserably after that. In fact, she must become independent. Obviously she didn't have the free time to look for FNK candidates, if that was her way of thinking. As long as she leaves Soratech to the heroine, they would certainly reach their happy ending. That's with first thing that she needed to do was to manage a territory in this game. After all, that is the main pleasure of this game. But since Celestina didn't have any territory under her name, the first thing that she needed to do was get a hold of some territory. The prosperity of the territory depends on the divine blessings of the landlord, or so it is said. Celestina's father was blessed by the sun god Saul, which is supposed to bring a stable climate and good harvest. Ah. What if something horrible happens, if I get the territory? It's not surprising to think that a person without blessings like me would bring something like a drought, a huge tornado, or a demon invasion. She wouldn't like that, but she cannot leave things as they are either. She suddenly thought of a good idea, I'll borrow some land from father. By doing so, the land will still be blessed because it is owned by him. That's a good idea she thought as she clapped her hand. She didn't want to bring inconvenience to the people of the territory anyway. Celestina just wanted to live to her old age happily. It will be meaningless if I'm exiled though. Well, even if we are to be exiled, as long she had knowledge it should be fine. Hereafter she should try and learn various things that will be useful to her. Even so, there was no way that her father would immediately agree to her borrowing some territory. First, let's sneak into his territory, Celestina thought. She decided to go to the territory with her maid, Anna, in a carriage. Celestina didn't often leave her house as she was despised for not having blessings. She would hate it if she were told something by another noble when she goes out. She would also hate it if her family was humiliated because she went out. That's why Anna was really shocked that she wanted to go out. When she looked out of her window she saw several couples who seemed to be happily shopping. Back quote that's right, going on a date would certainly bring them closer. As a noble, you really cannot freely visit the town. Even more so for the heroine who was supposed to have a weak constitution, and therefore was taking treatment in the countryside. It wasn't a grave illness, so she was out shopping in the village. In other words, they were supposed to have an incognito date. The prince and the heroine, disguised with just a pair of glasses went to town. It would be impossible normally, but since this was a game, he was not found out. Back quote well. This is not the game so there is no way that something like that world fear there. She saw the two of them, in a pair of glasses, leaving an ornament store. Even if she could possibly mistake the heroine, 
there was no way that she wouldn't be able to recognize Sora Tech. It's shocking to see that they're on a date in such a poor disguise. The heroine who was the Earl's daughter has lovely peach pink hair and yellow green eyes. In order to disguise, she was just wearing a simple yet elegant one piece and boots instead of a grand dress. She was smiling happily next to Sora Tech. She really seems to like him. What kind of reaction should I have here? 1. Call out to them and ask what they are doing. 2. Ignoring Sora Tech's disguise, enter the shop herself. 3. Act as if she didn't see them. Back quote I'll go with 3. Celestina acted as if she didn't see them. If she were to interfere with her, and it leads to a bad ending with Sora Tech's death then she wouldn't be able to forgive herself. Isn't that Prince Sora Tech? Following Celestina's line of sight, Anna recognized Sora Tech. As expected, it's a poor disguise. Celestina let out a sigh. Let's not bother with it and go. She gave Anna a wry smile. But Anna would not let this go so easily. The lady was being neglected by her fiancé. Even if she doesn't call out to him here, she should quickly inform her father the Marquis. It's fine, so please don't tell father. But Lord Sora Tech's fiancé's point are that was the reason for the BO data it was a mistake to ask her for the BO data. I was the only one who knew that the engagement would be broken and the progression of this game. I once again requested her not to reveal anything to father. Well, what she said is not wrong, so I don't affirm or deny it and just give her a smile. I'm sure you've thought of something Lady Celestina, so I won't say anything. But please don't keep things to yourself and discuss it. Master is also always worried about you yes, thank you. I'll certainly discuss it if something happens. For now, there will be many visits to the city and many preparations. She will also need more help, that's when she should probably discuss it. Back quote even so, it's not fun to see my fiancé with another. The possibility of Sora Tech being the heroine's partner was high from the beginning. He is the main capture target of the game and the other three are considered to be sub-targets. As I look ahead, I see the flower shop. It seems that Sora Tech wants to give her flowers and the clerk is making a bouquet. I also received several flowers from Sorak Tech. The clerk was earnestly making the bouquet. Various colored tulips, gerbera, and some small white flowers. It was turning into a lovely bouquet. She suddenly remembered that she only received bouquets with one flower, roses. Back quote as expected. The bouquet that the heroine receives is special. Celestina also loved flowers and plants, that's why she wanted various flowers, and not only roses. I don't really want to spy on their date. Please close the curtain. Certainly. In addition, the Marquis's carriage is extravagantly decorated, so Sora Tech may possibly notice Celestina as well. He hasn't looked at her even once. So it's probably fine but it best to avoid being noticed by them. It will take a few hours to reach father's territory, so I want to rest. I'll make the preparations. Thank you. Using a soft rug and a cushion, she hugged the cushion and adjusted it so that she doesn't hit the carriage wall. Once we leave the city I may not be able to sleep due to the bumpy roads. That true, since you don't go out often you are not accustomed to the wobbling of the carriage. She added another pillow after saying that. With this, it should be alright. Celestina thought as he closed her eyes. The world of the fantasy game back quote as Garol has a large temple in its center and five countries surround it. The country in which Celestina resides is the Empire of Alverd. Each country has the royal castle and a small temple at its center. Alvard is divided into five provinces. Celestina's father Bethel is responsible for one of those provinces. It's in the north of the empire and faces the royal capital. 
The distance between the two is short and hence it is easy to reach. The mansion that Celestina resides in is at the royal capital, governed by the royal family. The territory of Celestina's father is the closest to it with a carriage, ride of just 4 hours between the two. As expected, the carriage ride made her uncomfortable and tired, but she was refreshed the moment they reached the territory. The town was called Harmi. This is father's territory isn't it? Yes. You came here when you were just a small child. Has it been about 10 years now? That's right. After all, I don't really leave the mansion much. I think I used to be an energetic child. But since I didn't receive divine blessings, and since I felt that I'm the Valenus, I didn't really leave the mansion. What if someone said something to me, if I were to go out I was also trying to be a little considerate about my parents. At the very least, that meant that I had more time to study. I thought that I could make up for the lack of blessings with something else. Especially, since there was a chance that I could be married to Soratek. I didn't want to be a burden to him. At least if I was knowledgeable or so I thought. Well, that wasn't really necessary though. For now, I would like to avoid being executed and become independent. I would like to see father's big tree first. It's this way. The huge tree represents the blessings that the land has received. The greater the power of the landowner, the larger the tree grows and bears fruit. It seems to be pretty big, but since I don't have anything to compare it with, I cannot be sure. Backquote in the game, if the tree grows huge, an event will take place. Celestina had also tried to rush, in order to make it grow more. Backquote, anyway, I've got to see the land now. The land owned by her father, the Marquis, was lively and kept clean. Unlike the roads earlier, the roads here were well paved, and made for a comfortable carriage ride. The main street was incredibly lively with people out for shopping. The flowers that lined the street made the streets even brighter. It's a nice place point it would have been better if I had come to see it earlier. They got down from the carriage at the main street and headed to the town square. The big tree is grown from its seed, so you can choose to grow it wherever you like. Celestina's father chose to grow it at the center of the town. You could see it right from the end of the town. That gave a sense of security to the people. If by some chance the tree were to wither, it meant that something had happened to the owner of the territory. There is an old story that once something like this happened, the townsfolk prepared to leave and fled the town in the middle of the night. After walking for some time, they reached the base of the tree. Moved by the grandiose of the tree's foliage, Celestina let out a sound. Seeing the power of her father's divine blessings, she was certainly proud. Point it's amazing. It's really grand. This tree protects the people of this town doesn't it? That's right. I would like to walk around it bit, and then go to a cafe point is that alright? Of course. Lady Celestina, you're always inside the mansion so let's go to various places today. Anna nodded with a smile and Celestina also responded cheerfully. She didn't really know the town, so she had to be close to her maid. As she excitedly walked ahead, a young child ran into her, and they both fell to the ground. Kaya. You are. Lady Celestina. Ow, ah, I'm sorry, are you alright? Anna lent her hand to me, and helped me up as I turned to the child. He was wearing a hat clothes that were patched up in places. He was clearly a child from a poor family. As soon as Celestina looked towards him, he got up and ran away. Oh my. Some manners he has, are you okay? Yes, it's alright. The child was probably surprised by my presence. Don't think of it. I'm not injured, so there's no point in making a big deal. 
back quote he probably thought that I would ask for the payment for getting my dress cleaned. It can't be helped if he ran away out of fear. I'm sure his parents wouldn't be able to afford it either. Back quote ah. She suddenly noticed. My wallet is missing. No way. Don't tell me it's that boy from earlier. What should I do? The bookmark that Lord Soratek made for me is in that wallet. It's fine if I lose that money, but I absolutely want to keep the bookmark made by the Crown Prince Lord Soratek. Moreover, that bookmark was the first thing he handmade for me. Well. Back quote she saw him flirting earlier, but she is still so kind, Anna thought. Back quote he seemed incredibly proud, when he made I will be angry, if I were to lose it. No, he would certainly be angry. I can say for sure. That would be a troublesome development. Celestina decided that she must get the wallet back. However, she didn't know the area neither did she have physical prowess. As she was wondering what to do, a voice called out from behind. I'll get it back for you. A. There stood a boy, younger than Celestina. He had brown hair and beautiful jade green eyes. His clothes were patched up, and he certainly didn't look affluent. What should I do? M Back quote does he know the boy that stole my wallet? He might be an accomplice, but since the wallet has already been stolen, that's probably not the case. What if he wants a big reward? Back quote she cannot just let that happen either. But she cannot let Soratek get angry either. Please do point do you have any conditions? I want you to help someone. Understood. I'll try to help you as much as possible. Celestina was surprised because she thought that he would ask for money. Is it a family member or a friend? I don't know who it is but that's a kind child. Celestina wondered what he was planning to do in case he hadn't met her and this situation hadn't occurred. But she stopped that chain of thought, because there was no use in thinking about that. Wait here, I'll come back with it soon. He said as ran away. That kid, he knows the location doesn't he? It seems so. It seems like a good town point but it also has some shady places. It would be horrible, if we were to lose everything. Money, time, and labor. It wasn't something that she really wanted to see, but it was something that she needed to see. There was no certainty, but there was a possibility that no one would marry her since she wasn't blessed. In that case, she had to learn to manage the land. She had to borrow the land and live independently. The boy returned after about an hour. He brought Celestina's wallet along with him. This is your wallet right? That's right. That's it. Thank you for bringing it back. She checked the contents of the wallet. The first thing that she looked for was Soratek's bookmark. As long as that was there, she honestly didn't care about the money. Ah, all the money's in there. Isn't that obvious? The boy shot back when Celestina exclaimed. He said that it was obvious that the contents would be in place, since he said that he would get it back for her. That's right. I'm sorry. That was my bad. Thank you very much, UMM. Could I have your name? I'm Celestina. Hisoi. It's the same as your eyes, Jade. HM. More importantly, you'll help me right. Hisoi pulls on Celestina's arm saying that his name doesn't matter. The person he wants to save is probably not in a good shape. Celestina nodded and immediately followed behind him with Anna. We were guided by Hisu to a small raggedy hut towards the end of the town. Celestina was frowning due to the horrible condition of the hut, but she decided to bear with it. As she entered inside, her eyes flew open. The slightly dirty hair that she saw was certainly pretty white before. Their one that he wanted to save was stained with dirt and some blood. At first glance, he looked like a dog. 
but it was too big. It had terrible injuries, and was breathing short shallow breaths with a pained look on his face. Celestina gasped seeing him look so pained but more importantly, the one that Hisu wanted to save was shocking. This, fee, this one. What about it? A, no it's fine. Backquote isn't this a divine beast? She wanted to scream out, but since Anna was also here she kept quiet. Hisu looked puzzled, so he probably didn't know that this was a divine beast. Normally, people wouldn't be able to tell. Celestina knew about it, because it was game knowledge. This divine beast was drawn on the back of the game package. As a healing character, it was very popular. She was really grateful that the one that Hisu wanted to save was a good character. The beast, as explained, is the divine beast of God. Since it rarely appears in front of humans, people don't know much about it. Why is it here? Moreover, why is so badly injured? She had many questions but for now, she decided to treat him first. Hisu, let's take him back to my house to treat him. Ah, but my house is in the royal capital, it's very far. It would take 4 hours from here. Since the beast was injured, we couldn't let it travel for so long. It'll continue to become weaker as time goes by point as Celestina was wondering what to do. Anna spoke out. In that case, let's hurry to the Marquis house in this town. We even have servants staying here, so we can use their help. I see. Anna, can you please prepare the carriage immediately? Certainly. There was no way that she could carry such a huge dog and move around therefore she asked Anna to prepare the carriage. The Marquis house of this town certainly lived up to its name. There was a beautiful well maintained garden from the main gate till the entrance of the mansion. It was ready to receive visitors in the time. As they went towards the entrance in the carriage, the head servant came out to welcome them. Is this, Lady Celestina? I will immediately have your room prepared. Yes. Since it was a sudden visit, in order to get the preparations done, he gave out orders to several maids. It was certainly a house that belongs to a Marquis. She slowly got out of the carriage and called out to the head servant. I'm sorry for not contacting you in advance, it was an emergency. Did something happen? Since Celestina rarely left the house and was here in an emergency, the head servant thought that something serious must have happened. Did something happen to the Marquis at the royal capital? Celestina shook her head in response to the head servant. It's not related to my family. I would like you to check this child out. Please call a doctor immediately. This child? Please excuse me. He looked inside the carriage that Celestina was pointing at. Hisu and the divine beast were inside. A child? More importantly, a dog is injured? I'll make the arrangements immediately so let's move him to the guest room on the second floor for now. Yes, please. The head servant asked another servant to take the divine beast and excused himself to arrange a doctor. He would have been afraid to touch it if he knew that it was a divine beast. It looks like they hadn't realized. Celestina was relieved to know that. Hisu, a doctor will be coming soon so let's wait together. Understood. After moving him to the guest room, he was made to sleep on the bed. Celestina and Hisu sat down chairs next to the bed and waited for the doctor as they watched over the beast. Celestina reassured Hisu who seemed to be very concerned. Divine beasts have a strong life force, so he'll be fine soon. Divine beast. As expected, you weren't aware. Celestina gave a wry smile and explained to Hisu that the beast he cherished so much was in fact a divine beast. She would give the details to him at another time. The most important thing to do right now was to pray for his recovery. Hisu, what about your family? I can contact them. 
I don't have any. Isoi shook his head in denial. It's just me, and Toy pointed a divine beast, was it? The two of us. Is that so? In that case, it shouldn't be a problem for you to stay here. Selesina nodded and asked him to relax. Back quote is he an orphan? She wasn't really surprised, since he wasn't really in a good condition. There were no orphanages in the town and that was worrisome. Maybe the condition of the territory was worse than expected. Back quote, let's think about this, after we save the divine beast. More importantly, the divine beast is called Lord Toy isn't he? Yes. I named him. We've been together, since I was a child, and it was his fur, that kept me warm during winter. Is that so certainly, the winters in that hut, would have been hard. But I guess he was able to keep warm and sleep due to the divine beast. Hisoi and Toy seemed to have been living and protecting each other. Back quote it's the first time I heard of someone living with a divine beast. Isn't this a more amazing thing than the heroine of the game or the capture target Lord Sora tech? That's how amazing this was. Back quote when Toy becomes healthy, will I be able to become friends with him? What if I'm disliked by him, because I'm a villainess? I didn't receive any blessings from the spirits, so I was probably not liked by the gods. Her heart fell, as she thought of that. What happened? Hisu noticed immediately as I slightly frowned. Anyway, I was also worried about Toy. A. Hey. Ah, I'm sorry. I was I was thinking that I would also like to get along with Sir Toy and he recovers. That kind of a it's very important to me. Celestina tuned away from Hisu in shame. Toy was gravely injured, and Celestina was thinking of such useless things. That's what he probably thought. But he laughed out loud instead. Had her even though you're such a high ranking noble. Hisu seemed to say that this was nothing special. Back quote but the people from my previous world were ordinary. Celestina had made her debut into high society, but she had attended the bare minimum of events, like the night banquet. And it was enough for her to laugh by Sora Tech's side. Maybe that's why Celestina didn't really seem like a noble. Even so, she was trained in etiquette, and educated to become queen. It's alright. I think he'll like you. Point is that so? Yes. My intuition is pretty good. I thought that toy might be friendly towards humans, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Celestin laughed and looked towards toy. I would really like for him to heal quickly and meet him. Yeah. She still wanted to hear a lot more from Hisu, but since the doctor came they had to stop their conversation. Celestina, Hisu, and Toy were in the guest room that was prepared for them. The day after the doctor checked Toy, he had completely recovered, and was moving around. It was truly a marvel. Both Celestina and Hisu were shocked. She had heard that a divine beast has a strong life force, but she didn't know that it was this strong. Woof woof, a divine beast is amazing. I'm shocked. But I'm glad that Toy has recovered. As he sighed in relief, Hisu embraced Toy in a hug. As Celestina watched their exchange, she realized that they were still dirty. Hisu could have taken a bath the previous evening, but he was so worried about Toy that he wouldn't leave his side. Celestina called out kindly, Please take a bath first. Hisu, why don't you get in with Toy? Bath. UMM point you can use some hot water to clean the dirt off your body. It didn't seem like a good idea to let Hisu and Toy enter alone, so she asked a servant to go along to help them. As long as a maid accompanies them, it should be fine. After she sent them off to the baths, she slumped into the chair. There was no one else in the room so there was no need to be graceful. Celestina was wondering what to do hereafter. Back quote what will Hisu and Lord Toy do hereafter? 
since Hisu didn't have any family, she didn't want to throw the two of them out, just because Toy's treatment was over. She didn't really believe that she could save all children like this, but she wanted to do as much as she could for these two. Backquote will Hisu take the hand that I extend out to him? She wondered whether he would reject Celestina. But if I want to start managing the territory then Hisu would be a great help. There were many things that she didn't know about this territory, but she was after all still a child. If by some chance, Hisu were to come to my side. A fluffy white bread with a pecan and vegetable soup. A fried egg and salad. Yogurt with fruits. There was so much food prepared that they could have never finished it. Celestina thought as she waited for the two of them to return from their bath. As she drank her tea, she hoped that they would like their food. After a little while, they returned from their bath. Hisu and Toy were almost unrecognizable, they looked bright and fluffy. Without thinking, Celestina kept blinking. You've become really clean. I can't keep calm. Hisu's hair that seemed to be a dull brown earlier now glowed a pretty amber. He had also changed into some well-fitted clothes, so he looked like a noble. Toy's fur was pure white and really fluffy and soft. Celestina had a strong impulse to embrace him, but she held back. At the moment, Hisu's stomach growled. Ah, sorry. Let's have breakfast first. Hisu, please take a seat. Is it alright if I eat this? A. Yes, of course. Please eat as much as you'd like. Hisu took a seat and the maid poured him a glass of milk. After confirming that Toy's food was also prepared, he started to eat. He ate like he would soon pop. Celestina smiled at him and looked at Toy. She would have never imagined that she would be able to physically see a divine beast during her lifetime. Backquote she thought that this wasn't related to her as she was the villainess. If it was the heroine, then she would become friends with the divine beast, help the land prosper, become the queen, and help the kingdom prosper. Backquote come to think of it, what kind of date are they having? She had seen Sora Tech and the heroine in town yesterday. Hopefully, they've come to like each other enough, so that she wouldn't need to die. However, she could only sense the feelings between them, since there was no meter that showed her the level of their affection. Backquote as long as they continue to develop feelings for each other, it should be fine. It may be a huge problem for Sora Tech, but it was relieving for Celestina. Once Hisu had eaten to his heart's content, she let the servants off. She didn't want them to know that Toy was a divine beast, it was more convenient this way. HAA point it's been a long time since I ate so much. Seeing Hisu smiling so happily, Celestina also smiled. I'm glad that you're satisfied. The promise was only to save Toy, so is this alright? Well, it's not like a noble cannot afford this much but, while drinking the after meal tea, Hisu told her that he couldn't afford the food bill. Of course, Celestina didn't plan to charge him. He may be related to the boy who pickpocketed her also had thought in the beginning, but he seemed to have good morals. Backquote the only thing that I would want to request his toy. The person he helped out was a noble, so it would make sense if he had asked for more e-payment. Celestina thought that arranging a doctor and letting him stay overnight was not much. Do you and Lord Toy have any plans after this? No, not really. Just returning back to the hut point, but back quote Lord Toy. I can't call a divine beast casually. As she inclined her head and responded to Hisu, he countered with a back quote but. If you address him with a back quote Lord then it'll become obvious that Toy isn't a regular dog, but a divine beast instead. Ah. I didn't realize it. Celestina paled. But is it really okay to call him casually? Never calling his name in front of the servants will be quite difficult, 
she cannot really camouflage it. Hisu looked at Selesina who was thinking very seriously. It's alright if you just call him by his name right. Toy won't care about something like that. EHH, but he's a divine beast woof, Lord Toy, is it alright? As if to reassure her, Toy snuggled up to Selesina. She hesitantly stroked his fur, and then held him to her chest. Back quote up, cute. The softness was healing. For a person like Selesina who wasn't blessed, she was worried that she would be disliked by the beast. She was so glad that he was fond of her that called his name continuously. Toy, I'm Selesina. I'm really glad that your injuries have healed. Woof, after stroking him gently. Celestina returned him to Hisu. When she apologized to him, if she upset him, Hisu laughed. He always seemed to be on guard, so she was relieved that he was starting to relax a little. Besides, I'm really happy that Toy is fond of me. Hisu laughed since he thought that she was exaggerating, but to Celestina who was born a villain, this was very important. Thanks for caring for Toy. You did get my wallet back for me. I'm sure this isn't sufficient compensation right? Hisu wanted to receive some more compensation, but the shook his head in denial. I'm fine with this. I also got to have a meal. I see. You're a good kid. What? Don't call me a kid, I'm 16. A. We're the same age. I certainly believed that you were younger. She inclined her head as she wondered whether he was still in his growing period. Or was he growing slowly because he was undernourished? It wasn't a conversation that she should get into, so she decided to stop thinking about it. UMM, Hisu, if you'd like. HN. Won't you work for me? I want to like independently, but I don't know much about this town I would like it, if you could help me out. Hisu's eyes flew open as he heard Celestina. He hadn't expected anyone to say something like this to him. But this was a good proposition for Hisu who was homeless. He also thought that she may be aiming for Toy, the divine beast, but he was very sensitive to a lintent after meeting various people. But yes. I don't even know proper manners, I can do very little. Everyone is the same in the beginning. I also have a lot that I need to study. Celestin laughed as she reassured him that she didn't expect him to be perfect. The most important thing was to have an ally when her engagement was broken. There are many benefits to being the fianke of the crown prince. But once her engagement is broken, she may not have those benefits. In fact, there may even be dislike directed at her and the invitations to tea parties or evening parties may stop. Especially since she didn't have divine blessings. She didn't think that she would be harmed, but the fact that she didn't have blessings despite being a noble would become more prominent. Hisu stared at Celestina as he wondered what to do, but Toy was pivotal in making him decide. Woof Toy let out a happy bark and licked Celestina's cheek. Kaya, Toy point it's the first time that Toy has liked someone so much. Well, that's an honor moved by Hisu's words. Celestina hugged Toy. She wanted to spend more time with Toy, but she didn't want to be unreasonable to Hisu. Watching Celestina and Toy, Hisu laughed. Even though you're a noble, you're pretty candid. Alright, I'll work for you. Hisu. Thank you, I'm really happy. Pleased to work with you. Yeah. They exchanged a handshake and Celestina was relieved. Once Celestina introduced herself properly, Hisu let out a surprised sigh. He did know that she was a noble, but he never thought that she was the daughter of Marquis and the K of the Crown Prince. Are you really fine with employing me? Won't you be getting married to the Crown Prince soon? Ah. That's back quote since he's an ally, shall I tell him? My engagement will soon be broken. 
Ha. Huh? That's why she wanted to be independent. Selesina told her flabbergasted Hisu. Selesina took Hisu and Toy to the mansion in the royal capital. Her extremely worried father came to welcome her as he questioned her thoroughly. When Selesina told him that she had hired Hisu as an apprentice, he was suspicious, but soon agreed, since Selesina wanted it. Her father, Bethel relaxed a little as he watched Selesina. Since it's so rare for Sel to ask for anything, I'm really happy. Father. When Selesina recovered the memories of her past life at the ceremony at the age of 6, she became more mature and didn't make any selfish requests. Bethel thought that it was because she didn't receive any blessings, but that made him lonely. When she finally asked for something, it was for a boy the same age as her, so he was a little hesitant, but he wanted to respond to his adorable daughter's request. I would like Hisu to change his clothes, so we'll do the introductions in a little bit. Is that so? However, even though you are engaged at the moment point you'll soon be Prince Soratek's bride. Regardless of taking Anna as your maid, you won't be able to take him as your butler. He followed up by saying that he can continue working at the mansion. I see. What is it? Don't you want to become the queen? It's not that Selesina couldn't say that her engagement was to be broken soon as that may create a disturbance before the actual event. But since I don't have any blessings, I may not be suitable for Lord Soratek. That's what I've always been thinking. Sell. So. Selesin laughed sadly because he couldn't deny it as she ate the macaron. She made an ecstatic expression as it was delicious. There was a knock on the door. When she gave permission to enter, Hisu and Toy came in. Hisu wore clothes that were appropriate for the apprentice butler and Toy wore an adorable ribbon around his neck. Well, it suits you. And Toy you look really adorable. She glomped onto Toy who came rushing at her and happily licked her cheek. Watching the scene, Bethel welcomed the two with a smile. At the same time, he thought that he would have brought an animal to the mansion earlier, if he knew that Selesina would be so happy. Selesina went over to Hisu and was surprised. With his amber hair neatly set, he looked ready to work as a butler. Maybe he could become her right hand man when he grew up. Father, this is Hisu. He hasn't learned etiquette, but he is a good person. I'm Hisu, nice to meet you. HMM. Please take care of Zelesina. Hisu, I heard that you're a boy from town. You seem to be level-headed. Her father said while nodding. Hisu, what blessings do you have? As your master, I must know. I must tell you about my blessings. I mean is it compulsory? That's right. Since I'm the employer, it's obvious. What will you be good at? What potential you have, I can only decide once I know your blessings. For example, a person with the blessings of the spirit of fire salamander would even be suitable to become a chef. Whereas a person who is blessed by the wind spirit sylph often improves their motor skills and aims to become a knight. Often people don't like to talk about their blessings, but it's important to know as an employer. Since he seemed like he didn't want to say it, Selesina walked in front of him and told him that it's alright as she looked to her father. Father, I'll be his employer so please allow him to avoid reporting his blessings to you. What? Sal, you want to directly employ Hisu? Yes. His eyes flew open as he was surprised to know that she wanted to be his direct employer. She could certainly pay his salary, since he gave Selesina pocket money. She didn't spend much after anything, and saved most of her money happily. He placed his hat on his chin as he wondered what to do, but he said that he was fine with those conditions till Selesina got married. When you marry Prince Suratek, Hisu can work for me, since you can only take Anna with you. Understood. At that time, let's discuss it again. 
Yes. Backquote Lord Soratek will break the engagement, so it's not a problem. By the way, Cell. Yes. Have you heard the rumors? Rumors? What is it about? She knew that nothing big was supposed to happen around this time. At the start of the game, the only thing that happens is the entry of a heroine, but Celestina doesn't have any direct contact with the heroine. Since she didn't remember it, she shook her head as her father responded with a sigh and an backquote is that so? He was wondering whether he should tell Celestina, since it was a difficult thing to say. He inclined his head. But at Celestina's request to tell her honestly, he decided to tell her, while clearly mentioning that it was just a rumor. The rumor is that Prince Soratek is with another woman. I obviously didn't believe it, and I also confirmed it with the prince. Backquota, that's the heroine. No, wait, more importantly, backquote confirmed it? Shocked by her father's ability to take action, she urged him to continue. He said that, since he is the prince, it's often that there are rumors about him, but he already has a fianke, and he doesn't intend to dump her. A. It would have been fine to inform him that he would like to break the engagement. Why would he purposely try to continue it? He had to give trouble some answers. Backquote but Lord Soratek is kind. It would be difficult for him to tell Celestina that he found a girl that he wishes to marry. She informed her father that she wasn't bothered by it. It's fine if you're not anxious, but if something happens then tell me immediately. Understood. Thank you, father. While going to Celestina's room, she showed the mansion to Hisu. He looked around, while letting out noises like backquote up. This was a fresh reaction from Hisu. The butler will show you to your room later Hisu. You'll be training under Hanley as an apprentice butler for me. Understood. Although he wasn't good with words he responded immediately. She thought that she wanted to quickly see a Hisu that was trained in etiquette. Hisu, since I'm your employer. Please add back quote lady to my name. It might be a little stiff though but still. HN. Understood. Lady Cell. Point thank you. Back quote did he say that? Because father called me Cell. Anyway, that wasn't an issue. If it was then Hanley would let him know. Besides, she would prefer a butler that wasn't too stiff. After reaching her room. Celestina gave a key and a silver pocket watch to Hisu. This is the key to my room and that's a present for you, since you became my apprentice butler. Please take care of that key since only you, and I have it. A. U. N. Understood. Thank you Lady Cell. The only person who has a spare key other than the owner of a room is a butler. For now, Hisu only had a key to Celestina's room, but it would be good if someday he was entrusted with the responsibility of the entire household of Marquis Rinklet. You can wear the key around your neck and put the watch in your inner pocket. Understood. Hisu put the two away carefully while looking happy. She was glad that he was happy as she thought of asking him to start by pouring tea first, but she noticed Hisu's jade eyes watching her. He seemed like he wanted to ask her something. Lady Cell, you don't have any blessings. Yes, that's right. I haven't been blessed by the spirits or the gods. She sat down as she asked him whether she disliked such a master. Hisu quickly shook his head and muttered that he didn't. Hisu? Looking a little worried, Hisu approached her. He took her hand and looked at her. As his jade eyes drew near, they locked eyes and Celestina's heartbeat quickened. Hisu pressed onto her right hand and slowly touched her cheek. Celestina was panicking inside wondering what he was planning to do. Then she relaxed. Backquote Hisu is looking at my left eye. Why? She wanted to ask as she took in a breath and opened her mouth. 
Hey, Lady Cell, isn't that in your left eye? At that moment Celeste in a subconsciously squeezed her eyes shut and the door flew open. A. Hey. Cell, I came to see point who is that? Lord Soratek. UMM, Lady Cell's fianke. He came forward with big strides, and pulled his off Celestina. What are you doing? Soratek's cold voice echoed, and Hisu's face distorted, as if it was troublesome. Looking at it from the side it seemed, as if Hisu was pushing Celestina down. It was obvious, that her FMK would be furious. Lord Soratek, this is Hisu, my apprentice butler, I'm Hisu. Celestina quickly introduced him, and Hisu confirmed his identity. However, it wasn't easy to convince Soratek. Apprentice Butler? You'll soon be my bride so that's useless. It is, till that time. Hisa helped me out, when I got into trouble in town. As I was saying, I cannot forgive what I just saw. Hisu, depending on your answer I'll decide whether to let you off. Lord Soratek. Ignoring Celestina's plea, Soratek continued to hold his sou. He was certainly furious, since he who was blessed by the war god had his hand on the hilt of his sword. Seeing his anger, Celestina was scared. Backquote he doesn't even like me so why is he angry? She decided that it was male pride and she moved to protect his sou. However, his sou stopped her. His sou? It wasn't anything special. It's just that just that point what is it? Hisu opened his mouth but paused again. He looked towards Celestina from Soratek and said, It's beautiful. You. Celestina is my fianke. No, I meant her eyes are beautiful. Certainly, pink eyes were rare. I have never seen a person with God's blessings engraved in their eyes. Celestina blinked at Hisu's words. A. But I don't have any blessings. All this time she always believed that, and so did her family and fianke. Eyes, that's the first time I heard of something like that. Besides, I've looked into Cell's eyes multiple times. Lord Soratek. Soratek touched Celestina's cheek, and looked into her left eye. He thought that there was no way that he wouldn't have noticed the seal, since he had always been looking into her eyes. In order to relieve the anxious Celestina, he stroked her cheek and told her it's alright in a kind voice. However, he frowned immediately and shook his head. As expected, there is no seal. Is that so? No, I already knew. That I didn't have any blessings so nothing has changed. Maybe Hisu was also concerned about me. Celestina beckoned Hisu and said. Can you please prepare the tea? If you inform Anna, she'll make it. Understood. Thank you. After Hisu left the room, Celestina urged Soratek to sit down on the sofa. Celestina sat down next to him and called out to Toy who was waiting in the corner of the room. Woof good boy, Toy. Celestina smiled as she watched Toy happily coming towards her. What's this? It's the first time I've seen you with a dog. Watching the fluffy Toy come to Celestina's front foot up till her knee, Soratek gave a strange look. Once again he inclined his head and asked dog, and then he was convinced that it was certainly a dog. Backquote can he feel something from Toy? He looks like an adorable dog from outside, but he is actually a divine beast. Maybe Soratek would be able to feel something, since he is blessed by the war god Thursday. Point well, that's fine. More importantly, Cell. Yes? Don't get too close to the servants. That kind of butler is not suitable for you. Soratek was in a bad mood as he muttered that Hisu was starting a false rumor about Celestina having a seal. Celestina thought about Hisu as she stroked Toy. Even though Soratek said that she believed that Hisu would not start false rumors, 
she thought that maybe Hisu saw something that she hadn't seen before. Backquote he was even loved by a divine beast. Could he see something that no one else could? My seal. There was certainly a possibility, no matter how dim. But the problem at present was that he was disliked by her fee in case or attack. This was going to be troublesome, she internally sighed. No, I won't fire Hisu. Why? Hisu brought back my stolen bookmark point the bookmark that you made for me. Sora Tech knew that Celestina cherished that bookmark and always carried it in her wallet. He immediately realized that something had happened. Were you injured? No, I wasn't injured. Is that so? However, if you wanted to go out, you could have called me? She couldn't tell him that he was right in the middle of a date with the heroine that day. Celestina smiled bitterly and looked at Sora Tech. No, you're very busy so please, don't worry about it. I went with Anna, we had a girl's day out. HMM point I've heard that it's popular for women to have outings together 40 and such. Back quote did he hear it from the heroine? Unconsciously, she felt a little bad. But she immediately shook her head slightly. She was a villainous. She wasn't fated to be with Sora Tech. Back quote I have to be with and make happy someone other than Lord Sora Tech. Well, worst case I guess I'll be single. That's why I'll be cheering for you and the heroine to get along well together. Point that's why. Please don't hurt Hisu. He brought the bookmark back for me. Celestina got up from the sofa, went to the drawer, and took out a notebook. Since she didn't want to risk something like this happening again, she had kept the bookmark safe in a notebook. I'm really happy that you cherish it so much Cell. But you're more important to me than that bookmark. So please don't do something dangerous in order to protect that bookmark. Lord Sora Tech. Certain life is Finn K were to get injured while trying to protect his gift. It wouldn't look good. Celestina scolded herself for acting carelessly. Thank you for caring for me. I won't do such things hereafter. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll have to ban you from going out alone. It's not like he wanted to tie her down, but he was really worried. Sora Tech conveyed to Celestina. Point I would have never thought that you would worry about me so much. She voiced out her musings and that left Sora Tech in a bad mood. He got up from the sofa and went over to her. Since you're my fiancé, isn't it obvious? Seriously, please understand that I love you. Ye, yes. She was perplexed hearing such words that sounded like a confession. Since he already had the heroine, it didn't make any sense for him to care for her. But still, that line has tremendous destructive power. This is the attack power of the capture target. She screamed internally. The heroine has to take this kind of an immensely powerful attack every time. It's obvious that she would fall in love. Backquote but, I'm a villainess. Celestina smiled cheerfully and returned the bookmark back into the drawer. That's good. HN. Lord Sora Tech, your smiling face is really handsome. I'll scold Hisu properly so please, let him off his time. Got it. But, there'll be no next time. Celestina breathed a sigh of relief as Sora Tech thought about it and replied. If he were to dislike Hisu any more than this then it would become troublesome. Anna came in with tea and sweet and the conversation about Hisu naturally ended there. I guess Sora Tech would also be grateful that he got back the bookmark that was stolen. There was no need for any more discussion. Backquote as expected, Hisu didn't return. Her apprentice butler wasn't present during Sora Tech's visit. But it wasn't like she could hold him responsible. Because he would end up ruining Sora Tech's mood. Toy seemed a little lonely, so I'll have to let him spend a lot of time with Hisu later. That dog is really friendly. 
It's Toy. He's only friendly to Hisu and me, not really to anyone else. Is that so? Sora Tech went to pet Shio who was settled at Celestina's knee, but withdrew his hand subconsciously. He had often ridden horses, but he didn't really have too many chances to meet other animals. In fact, he had been interested in Toy right from the start. I think it will be alright, if you pet him. But if he dislikes it then please stop immediately. Understood. Sora Tech extended his hand out gently, and stroked the fluffy fur on Toy's head. Toy immediately squinted in pleasure, and seemed to look pleased. Toy seemed more mature than Celestina imagined. What if? She wondered if she picked him up, and placed him on Sora Tech's knee. Oh I, salute if he doesn't like me. Ah, I think he likes you woof woof, Toy happily licked Sora Tech's cheek. Since he was rude to Hisu, it wouldn't be surprising if Toy didn't like him. Toy went closer to Sora Tech's right hand. Towards Sora Tech's seal. Backquote is he reacting to the seal, since he is a divine beast. If he was attracted to people who were blessed by powerful gods then it would make sense. Celestina didn't know Hisu's blessings, but she thought that it was surely something rare since Toy was so fond of him. Backquote Hisu didn't even tell father about his blessings. If he was blessed by the spirits then there was nothing to hide. That's why there was a high possibility that he had special blessings. She thought that Toy was attracted to people who had rare blessings. Backquote, ah, but. If that was the case, then why did Toy like her? Hisu did say that Celestina had her seal in her right eye. Backquote could I have special blessings, even though I'm the villainous? She sighed as she thought that, since she was the main character once, it wouldn't be surprising. But the biggest reason why she was considered a villainous was because she was considered to be backquote abandoned by the gods, that was the catchphrase. Was she really abandoned? She inclined her head as she wondered if something took place after the ending. Sora Tech looked at Celestina who was deep in her thoughts. Cell. Ah, no, it's nothing. It seems that Toy likes your seal. HN. Ah, that's right. He's almost like a divine beast, liking the seal of blessings. While stroking Toy, he happily asked if Toy was a divine beast. That's right. He's a divine beast. Celestina acknowledges in her mind. Do divine beasts like the seal of the gods? That's what I read in some documents. Everyone seems to know about divine beasts, but only a few have had a chance to meet them. I see thus I became more concerned about Hisu and my existence. However, I don't want to hear about Hisu's seal, if he doesn't want to talk about it. For now, let's watch the situation for a while. It was late in the night, when Bethel returned home from work. Even though he was tired, he had still had perfect posture, Celeste in a thought. Welcome back, father. Ah, thank you for coming out to welcome me Cell. I heard that Prince Soratek visited you. Was everything alright? Yes. There were no issues. Toy liked him as well. Bethel removed his coat and handed it over to the butler. He said, is that so? And he seemed to visibly relax. Celestina realized that he was concerned about the rumors that had been floating around about the prince, but Celestina wanted the prince to get along better with the heroine. However, it's almost midnight. Usually, you'd be asleep at this time. Did something happen? He thought that something had happened with Sora Tech, but it seems that that wasn't the case. Bethel inclined his head and looked at Celestina. Backquote the intuition of a father. Celestina gave a wry smile and properly explained to Bethel the reason why she had been waiting for him. Actually, I wanted to request something of you, father. HMMIC. Let's hear it in the study. Thank you. 
It was also partially due to the butler being there, but she couldn't suddenly express her request. Realizing that this was a difficult topic for Celestina, he decided to switch location to the study. Watching Bethel back, as he walked towards the study slowly, she inhaled deeply. Celestina wanted to request her father for some land that she could borrow. If she were to become independent hereafter, if she were to be away from the royal capital even for a little while, it would give Sora Tech a chance to get closer to the heroine. There were several books lined up on the bookshelves on the wall. There was a grand table made with a rich, deep colored wood, her father's office table. A leather chair sat in front of the table, and a sofa was placed facing the table. Celestina sat down on the sofa, facing her father. The butler, Hanley, poured some wine for her father and some tea for her. It's rare for you to request something. Is it about Hisu again? No. HN. Her heart was racing as she looked into the eyes of her father. There was a calm atmosphere surrounding them, anyway, this wasn't so easy to say or to ask. Bethel had a sip of wine, and then waited to hear Celestina. I want my own territory. What? Of course, I don't believe that I can manage it by myself immediately. However, may I borrow a piece of land from you, father? No matter how small. Hearing Celestina's words, Bethel made a stern expression. She didn't expect him to agree immediately, but to think that he would look so averse to it a cold sweat ran down her spine even so this had to be done a territory was certainly very precious it was his responsibility to protect the people of that land a responsibility handed over to him by the emperor sell you don't have any blessings you will not be able to manage the land you understand right Bethel seemed to say with his eyes. Why would you purposely ask for challenges? You're a girl, so you can just live at home peacefully till the time you get married. He said. But that's not possible. Backquote because I don't know what happens to the Valenus after the engagement breaks. What if she cannot live at home anymore? What if she cannot live at the royal capital? There was always that possibility. That's why Celestina couldn't back down here. She needed to have the power to stand on her own feet. As you said father, I don't possess any blessings, so it would be impossible for me to manage a territory on her own. That's why I would like to learn how to manage a territory by borrowing some from you, father. With a tensed heart she looked at Bethel. Celestina didn't think that she would receive permission with just this. That's why she gave him the most promising reason. I cannot possibly stand by Lord Soratek's side as a queen, when I cannot do anything, or without any blessings. Sel. Were you thinking of something like that? He balled his hand into a fist, and looked at his trembling daughter. He was remorseful, that he couldn't do anything. Right now I could protect her directly but once she was married to Sora Tech, he wouldn't be able to protect her as much as now. If Celestina could learn to protect herself then it would be very good. Especially if Sora Tech turned out to be a flirt. Bethel was thinking of such things, but he still didn't want his adorable daughter to leave the mansion. In that case, why don't we hire more home tutors? We can search for tutors that can teach tutor you in a field that you haven't learned about yet. Bethel suggested that it would be alright for her to learn at the mansion instead of leaving home. But that was meaningless, so Celestina shook her head. If you go to the territory, then neither I nor your mother will able to come and help you by your side. That's why please reconsider. Bethel was disturbed but Celestina was willful. How do you get that stubbornness from me? Please, father. I can give you the 7th district. The area is small, and it is the least developed place. You'll definitely return in 3 days. Sighing, 
Bethel gave his permission. Celestina was relieved, since she believed that she wouldn't receive permission unless she stuck around for another few days. Backquote is the security bad in the 7th district? According to Bethel's words, it seemed to be the worst district. Rather than trying to persuade his stubborn daughter, he was probably expecting her to return home by giving her a hard task. Thank you, father. But, there is a condition. Condition? Just as Celestina was about to express her gratitude, Bethel stopped her. Looks like he wasn't satisfied by just giving her an extremely difficult district to work with. Bethel got up from the sofa and took out one key from his desk. Backquote what is that key for? She inclined her head. It was a red key that she had never seen before. It was too small to be a key to one of the rooms in this mansion. It may be a key to some drawer. Sal, come here. Yes. Bethel opened the door to the room that was connected to the study and led her in. It was a six mad tatami room with only a desk. The moonlight flooded in through the window on the ceiling. Celestina wasn't aware of this room, so she looked around at her surroundings. However, there was nothing else there. There was only a writing instrument on the table. I never imagined that there would be a day when I had this over to you sell. However, this is good too. Father? Bethel brought out a small box from the drawer and opened it with the red key. He took out a small seed from within. She couldn't tell whether it was a seed for a flowering plant or a medicinal herb just by looking at it. After checking that the seed was still inside, Bethel handed over the box with the seed and the key to the box to Celestina. This is a seed for the great tree. He said cheerfully, A. Great tree, it's a tree that protects the country in this world. Backquote I didn't know that there was a seed for it. In the game, the tree was grown using a sapling, so I didn't know that there was a seed for this. Even so, it wasn't so strange that there was a seed for this. Backquote it's an unbelievably rare item isn't it? Was it really alright to give it to her, Celestina, of Elenus? She exclaimed inside her heart. Of course, she would want to receive it if possible. I'll entrust the seed to you. Celeste in a point plant it in the 7th district. Ensure that it blooms within a year. If you can, then I'll hand that territory over to you. Me. Making the great tree bloom? Backquote but I haven't received any blessings. The blessings you receive play a big role in helping the great tree grow. Celestina didn't have any blessings. Would she be able to make it bloom? Or even sprout for that matter? She bowled her fists. She really wanted to scream that it was impossible. But then there was a possibility that she wouldn't be allowed to leave the mansion. In that case, I don't have a choice. Celestina swallowed hard and looked at Bethel. Understood. I will certainly make this tree bloom. Point yeah, I look forward to it sell. Before I knew it, you have grown into such a strong girl. Thank you, father. Backquote it's alright. I can do it. I know about the facilities needed in the territory and what needs to be done due to the knowledge of the game. Shockingly, father had decided to hand over the development of that land to me. Celestina's father's territory was divided into nine districts. The location was to the north of the royal capital where Celestina lived. There were two large cities and three villages in the territory that was managed by the tax revenue collected from there. The seventh district was to the west of the territory. She was entrusted the land by Bethel by she had no idea about the kind of place it was. She thought that Hisu might have an idea. So she asked him, A. The 7th. District? Are you going to point manage that lady cell? That's right. Do you know about it Hisu? Hisu inclined his head while pouring tea. 
Hisu was making a flabbergasted expression and both Selesina and Toy were clueless. Hisu let out a big sigh and asked. Is it possible for you to change the place? Back quote A, eh? is it that bad? But it was father's territory after all, so it couldn't be that bad right? He certainly did say that it was the most underdeveloped though. HAA. The 7th district has nothing. No, that's wrong. It has one small village. A. But I thought that father's territory only has three villages though and as far as she knew, those three weren't in the 7th district. She was relying on her very faint memory. But the Hisu said an unbelievable thing. The people from the slums of the city of Harmel created their own village there. A. Is it because the exits weren't blocked that something like this happened? A small part of the city near the royal capital is also part of the 7th district. That's why they don't live there. I see. Backquote I had no idea that there was a slum in father's territory. But since those people left the city to create their own village, then they should be managed properly. There should be a ceremony for receiving blessings for those children that are born there. Bethel is too busy, so there's no way that he can make time to go there and check the place out. Celestina was disturbed to know that the situation was this bad. But since she had already told him that she would most definitely do this, she couldn't take it back anymore. I'm thinking of spending more time in the mansion at Harmel. Eventually, I would like to have my own mansion in the 7th district. I'm fine with it, however, won't it be difficult to live in a mansion at the 7th district? There will be several difficult tasks before us. But even if we have a mansion there, we cannot live there with just the two of us. We will need to hire more people, a maid will be necessary. Even if Isu was Celestina's apprentice butler, he was still a man. She would obviously not be allowed to stay together with just the two of them. Celestina had to look for servants for herself. Isn't the maid right not okay, I mean alright. That's no possible. She is hired by father. That's why she must hire some for herself, Celestina told Hisu cheerfully. At first, Celestina wanted to bring her own maid. But she would soon be cornered by her father, who desperately wanted her to stay back in the mansion. He would tell her, since you can't even hire slash find your own servants then it's better for you to stay in the mansion isn't it? But what was it that father would really want to say? That since I want to be independent, I must find my own servants. F you you. Well, if Lady Cell is fine with that then I'm okay I mean alright as well. Fufu, foo, you seem to be learning the lingo a bit. Not yet. She laughed at Hisu who returned to his original way of speaking and said, let's go check the place out. There was no need to take Anna along for this, just her and Hisu were fine. Toy would also be coming along. So they would be fine, even if something were to happen. Father told me that it was fine to do as I pleased from today. Understood, I'll make the preparations. Thank you. If you ask Hanley, he'll guide you. Hisu nodded yes, and left the room. Celestina changed her clothes and got ready. She wandered about the village that had been established and the district handed over to her point and wondered what to do. Anyway, let's think about it, after I've seen it. After leaving the royal capital, they passed through Bethel's territory and came to a wasteland of sorts. There was some vegetation growing here and there, but the soil was dry and didn't look fertile. This is the point 70h district. Backquote father really wants me to stay back home. Celestina smiled her eye smile as she realized that this would be a harder task than she had imagined. First, she decided to go around the 7th district by carriage to check the place out. It seemed like it will take a day to travel from one end to another. 
that seemed to be the distance. She was relieved, since she could look around the place, even if time was short. Let's go see the newly established village first. Understood. Hisu was riding the carriage. He started to move the carriage, in order to see the surroundings. After a few hours, there were several small huts visible. They seemed to like proper homes. She was worried about what to do, if they were living in tents instead but there was no reason to worry about that anymore. We've arrived I think I have told you before, but this place is far better than the slums in other cities. A. Hey, is that so? Hisu nodded yes to the surprised Celestina. I've lived in a slum before so I know. Well, recently Toy and I had been living in a hut though. So that's how it is, but I must bring order to this place. I must do my best. A village that wasn't on the map. Could she live here after her banishment? She was starting to wonder. As long as she didn't do horrible things to the heroine then I guess this much might be allowed. For that reason, she must help this village prosper first. Point anyway, let's go inside. I'll hold the luggage, so that it's not stolen. Thank you Hisu. Please do. She couldn't have her wallet stolen again. She didn't even know if she could get it back this time that's why she entrusted it all to Hisu. For now, she wanted to meet the person who established this back quote village. Celestina wanted to let him know that she was not entrusted with this land and plant the seed of the great tree. The power of the great tree would restore the soil and make it fertile. Back quote the question was, would she be able to grow the great tree when she didn't have any blessings? But Toy the divine beast was with her, so it may work out somehow. She decided to think positively. This village that wasn't even on the map had five wooden houses. All of them were one story house that looked the same. The exterior was very simple, without any decorations or flowering plants. It seemed to be fit for living though. Celestina, Hisu, and Toy went further inside. They saw three small children, two young women in their twenties. They were preparing food in a large pot. They looked towards us with wary eyes. Back quote thank god they have food. Celestina breathed a sigh of relief and called out to the women. I'm Celestina Rinklet. I would like to meet the person in charge of this village. Could you please guide me? A noble, here. UMM, I'll guide you. Please come this way. Thank you. One of the women was shocked, and the other hurriedly guided us in. The children looked at us curiously, and trembled a little, when they laid their eyes on Toy. Looks like they were scared of him, since he was a huge dog. I'll take them to Grandpa Anton, so you finish making the food. Understood. Yes. The young woman took us to the house that right in the center. There was no magic tool to light up the inside of the house, but light flooded into the house through the window on the ceiling. There were two men inside the house. It's been several months since we started living here. Point we've tried making fields, but as expected it didn't work out. The soil isn't very good. If we could only pump some water from the river over here. The man looked like he was in his 50s as he let out a huge sigh. The one who agreed with him was an even older man. They seemed to be extremely worried about this village. That's not all there is to be worried about point the landowner may have an objection. That's right. But staying in the slums in the city wouldn't have been good for the future of those kids. She was reminded of the children in this village. If they were to grow up in those slums, they wouldn't be able to turn into decent adults. In order for them to grow up properly and get decent jobs, they should grow up in a better point environment. That's what these men seemed to wish for. There was a hurried knock on their door. A voice called out, Grandpa Anton. Anton, being the old man. What is it? So noisy. UMM, we have some honored guests. Guests? Honored? 
that's a very respectful way of speaking, Anton. The old man laughed and said. Although his eyes flew open when he saw Celestina at the back. Back quote is this the person in charge of this village? Celestina curtsied gracefully and said. It's my first time meeting you. I'm Celestina Rinklet. I was entrusted to the 7th district by my father the Marquis. Nice to meet you. The daughter of the lord? This is Gats. Let's do the introductions first. I'm Anton, the person in charge of this village. X, excuse me. I'm Gats. I make homes and fields. Celestina was relieved from the bottom of her heart that they introduced themselves so easily. She was worried that they may point be hostile towards her. She thought that, since they came from the slums, they may dislike nobles. Backquote, they want to protect the children. Maybe that's also the reason why they are being so nice. That is the Lord angry that we constructed homes here. Gats's hands were trembling a little when he asked Celestina. What if they were asked to leave immediately? Celestina shook her head while smiling in order to relieve him. No, father has entrusted this land to me. To Lady Celestina? Yes. Gats widened his eyes when he heard that. Why? Because it was a very famous story that the daughter of the Lord wasn't given any divine blessings. There was probably no one in the country who didn't know about it. That's why Gats thought that this land must have been abandoned. That's UMM, that. Gats. First, let her have a seat. We can't talk with her standing there. Thank you for letting us in. Celestina sat down on the chair and Gats prepared tea. After thanking him, she turned and looked behind. Hisu and Toy. We'll wait outside. Is that so? Thank you. It wouldn't be good to have a large dog come into the house, so she let them wait outside apologetically. She introduced Hisu to Anton and Gats, and then moved on to the main subject. Let me tell you straight away. Ye, yes. Celestina looked straight at Anton and Gats, and took in a deep breath. I would like to plant a great tree here, and manage this place as the lady of this land. Does that mean, that you will recognize this place as a village? Yes. Celestina cheerfully nodded to Anton's question. Celestina would become the lord and Anton would be the village chief and this village would be officially recognized. It will be named and receive a place on the map. For a person like Anton who lived such a humble life, this was great news. Backquote there was the fact that Celestina didn't have any blessings but this land is already not very good so it most likely wouldn't deteriorate further by having a lord that didn't possess any blessings. Moreover, the actual owner of this land is Bethel. So this land should be under the protection of Bethel's blessings. Anton thought. Moreover, the fact that this village could be recognized was very welcome. He lowered his head. Thank you Lady Celestina. There are very few people here other than me and Gats, but point but we'll cooperate with you to become your strength. Thank you for your help and nice to meet you, Mr. Anton. There were 14 people in this village including Anton and Gats. There were two men in their 20s, three women in their 20s, and seven children. They helped each other out and cooperated with each other for daily living including cooking etc. Backquote they were preparing food outside in that large pot. She happily thought that this was a warm place. If it's here then she may be able to do well even without blessings. Backquote even if it's just a little, she wanted to be acknowledged by the people in this village. She aimed to turn this into a big town. Of course, it would be great if this place could be developed into a big city but for now, she was the oversee this place for a year. Most likely, within that time, she here engagement would also be broken. At that time she didn't want to be alone. 
She wanted to have more allies. In that case, let's plant the great tree. Mr. Anton, can I plant the seed in the center of this village? Of course. I would have never imagined that I would be able to witness the planting of the great tree. Anton and Gat swallowed hard. They couldn't hide their surprise that a great tree would actually be planted in this village. The great tree protects and blesses the land around it within a certain radius. The effect is proportional to the blessings of the owner of the land. For example, it could shield the village or city from an enemy invasion, help the growth of vegetation, or give good health to the citizens of the town. More important is the Asgeral system that players can use. I'm nervous. It'll be fine if it's you Lady Cell. Thank you, Hitsu. Let's aim for germination first. After leaving Anton's house Celestina went towards the center of the village, although, Anton's house was more or less at the center. Anton gathered all the other villagers informing them that something was about to begin. Celestina who didn't want to show a pitiful appearance readied her fighting spirit. Backquote where should I plant the seed? It didn't have to be the absolute center. In fact, anywhere close to the center was fine as long as there was sufficient place for the tree to grow. A little away from Anton's home was a large clearing. She decided to plant the seed there. Is it alright if I plant it here? Of course. As you please Lady Celestina. Thank you. After confirming with Anton. Celestina turned to face Hisu. Let's plant it here Hisu. Can you please bring me the seed? Yes, woof. While Hisu was bringing the seed, Toy went up to the designated location for the tree and started to rub his nose on the ground. A. Hey. Celestina was surprised as she wondered what Toy was planning when he started to use his paws to dig the soil. He seemed to understand that they were planning to plant the seed there, and began to soften the soil around it. After Toy had finished plowing the earth, Celestina stroked and complimented him, touched by the fact that he helped her. Thank you, Toy. With this, we'll surely be able to sprout it soon. Woof. Toy looked proud, as if he seemed to understand that he was being praised. Celestina bought out the seed from the small box that Hisu handed over to her. Will it grow well by just touching it? She was anxious and her heart was racing. Hisu, Anton, and the other villagers were watching over her from behind. Then let's plant the seed. Celestina took in a deep breath and spoke, and then lightly dug the soil, and planted the seed. Back quote the great tree grows under the influence of its owner. Right now. Celestina was acting as the landlord for this place, so that would make her the owner. The blessings of the owner were necessary for the tree to grow. The stronger the blessings, the bigger the tree would grow, and bestow more blessings. They say when you have the blessings from the gods, your tree would be full bloom every year, and bring a good harvest. Backquote point it will be fine. It will certainly grow well. Celestina thought as she covered the seed with soil. Now the only thing left to do was water it every day and pray for it to grow well. Lady Cell, here. You've prepared the water. Thank you Hisu. Celestina took the watering can from Hisu and poured some water over the soil. Immediately, the ground seemed to shake a little. A. HN. Hisu seemed to notice it as well. He came beside her as they watched the soil closely. Asterisk PYOKKO. Asterisk I. A bud. Shocked, Celestina was about to fall back, but Hisu stopped her. That's right, it was as Hisu said. There was a sprout. There were two yellow green leaves, and the height was only a few centimeters. Even if it was a great tree. For it to sprout to faster Verion was buzzing. Does the great tree grow by going against the laws of nature? Amazing. To think that I would be able to see it with my own eyes. Will the village prosper? 
will vegetation grow on the fields? Selesina could hear everyone speaking, but she was still the one that was most surprised, and she clearly couldn't hide her shock. Backquote no way, no way, no way, it has already sprouted. Even though it should have taken a few days at the least. Was it because it was the great tree, or was it because this was the world from a game? Selesina couldn't understand. But the growth, if the tree depends on its owner. Inclining her head, Selesina got up and looked at the villagers. Their eyes seemed to be shining with expectation. Selesina scolded herself of shaking due to tremendous pressure. Point I'm Selesina Rinklet. I'll be acting in as the landlord of this land from today. As you have seen, I have just planted the seed to the great tree. Let us all grow together with this great tree. Yes. Hearing Selesina's words, they replied at once in a strong voice. This is for real now. Selesina needed to let Anton know that she would need a workplace in this village. A simple place would be fine, so she would like him to prepare one. She didn't have her place right now, so she decided to go back to the carriage. It would be fine to ask the people of the village to make it for her once she handed over the material cost and wages. Hisu, can you speak to Anton for making a base for me? I would like for it to be within this budget HN, understood. Hisu took the bag and frowned once he peered inside. I think this is too much. Hisu told her that it would be cheaper to have the villagers make it instead of a specialized carpenter. Selesina didn't know the market price, so she looked at Hisu and spoke without taking the money back. I also need some furniture, so I'll hand that money over to you. If you feel that something needs to be purchased then please purchase it. A. Me. Of course. You're my butler after all. Understood. Hisu looked very happy when I told him that I trusted him. He immediately replied, leave it to me. I'll speak to Mr. Anton and come. Toy, stay by Lady Cell and protect her. Woof, he's a reliable escort. After seeing Hisu off, Toy and Selesina went into the carriage. What she was about to do was a secret from Hisu as well. In fact, that was the reason why she sent him to Anton's place. She closed the carriage door and took in a deep breath. A Garol system. Start up. Selesina called out with a strong voice, and as she opened her eyes, she saw a hologram plate appear. There was information about her, the land, and the great tree on it. The players can use this system, the Asgaral system. It helps the owner see their condition or the condition of their land. Selesina Wrinkler Tree owned, level 1 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory owned, District 7 of the Asgaral Kingdom. Citizens. 15 Great Tree Skill. Fertility Protection Level 1. Vegetation will grow, will in the area surrounding the tree. Ah. Thank god point I can access it. The basic info is the same as I've confirmed to I as my guardian beast. Isn't this an amazing, invincible? She thought. She thought that he was only Hisu's friend, but he was actually her ally as well. Ah, Toy, I'm so happy. Since there was no one around, she didn't need to speak gracefully. She started to pet Toy. The feeling of the soft fur felt great, and she wanted to keep hugging him. She stroked him till she was satisfied. That's right. The Asgaral system. She looked at the screen and nodded. She didn't need to rush to increase the level of the great tree, but she needed to acquire more skills. The skills are acquired as the level of the great tree increases. You can also gain more skills by completing quests. They can also be gained during romantic events. She gave up on acquiring skills through romantic events. Because she was a Valenus, that couldn't be loved by anyone, so she couldn't acquire those skills. For now I have to remember 
that the skill gained at level 1 is fertility, the quality surely improves further when the great tree grows to 15 meters. First, we need to make fields here. There is a skill that helps vegetation grow so let's aim for that first. But the villagers are 1515. Back quote according to Anton, there should be 14. Ah, Hitsu. Since he is her butler, he would be included in the number of people in this village. That's why there are 15 people. There are skills that can be gained depending on the number of people in your land. We need to continue to develop this village. Phew foo, I have almost memorized all the conditions required to gain skills. Won't I be invincible with the Asgeril system? With this, she needn't be afraid of her engagement being broken. She though brimming with joy. Celestina was desperately trying to retrain her incredible joy inside the sawing carriage. Only wonderful things had happened today. After worrying about whether it would even sprout, the seed of the great tree sprouted. The people of the village welcomed her. Something so happy had taken place, was she really a villainous? She was starting to doubt it. What happened, Lady Cell? Hisu. No, it's nothing. Is that so? Celestina's joy seemed to be leaking over to Hisu as well. She covered her warm face with her hands. Hisu was staring intently at Celestina. Lady Cell, are you really grateful, eh? Her heart skipped a beat at his surprising words. She didn't expect him to say something like that. Back quote she hadn't really expressed herself fully in front of anyone. He really had great insight. Celestina thought as she looked at Hitsu. Maybe you think that way because I'm active. Since I want to manage your territory, I can't be your regular lady, right? Well, that's true. He seemed to be convinced as he nodded. Although he still seemed to doubt her a little, since he kept watching her. For now, she decided to smile elegantly to deceive him. In order to change the topic, she spoke to Hisu about her plans. I'm thinking of planting some vegetation, by creating fields in the village first. Yeah, it's important to secure a food source. How about potatoes? Alright, let's go with that. Phew foo, I'm looking forward to it, they easily concluded what to do next. Together with the developments, Celestina's joy was also steadily increasing. Once she harvests the crops, the great tree will release a new skill. The target, for now, was level up the great tree to level 5. At level 5, the great tree will prevent the invasion of monsters within its surrounding. It forms a barrier of sorts, so it's also the role of the lord of the land to upgrade the level of the great tree till then. After a few days, Hisu, Toy, and Celestina visited the village again. It looked the same as before. The lifestyle of the villagers was the same as before with the women and children cooking near the center of the village. The sapling of the great tree was close to that area. Let's water it first, Hitsu. Yes. Here, Lady Cell. After watering the sapling, Celestina called out to Anton and Gats who had come to greet her. I'm thinking of creating a field today. A. Hey, there is a field to the north of the village. However, nothing really grew there. The soil was not nutritious enough for something to grow. Gats tried various things to ensure that something grows but nothing really worked out. Because of this experience, he wasn't really interested in making another field. Back quote but now we have the blessings of fertility of the great tree so everything will be fine. However, this skill at level 1 only has an effect up to a 25 meter radius. It would be sufficient considering the number of people in the village. It's alright Mr. Gats, we have the blessings of the great tree. Great trees yes. Let's make a field close to the great tree, and grow some potatoes. Point understood. If that's what you feel Lady Celestina. 
Gats nodded and called out to the two young men who were returning back to the village. He wanted some helpers to plow the land. We'll get the potato seedlings from the carriage. Then, we'll plow the land in the meantime. Thank you, Mr. Gats. Once Celestina thanked him, Toy barked and went up to the land, where the potatoes were meant to be planted. He seemed like he wanted to help the process. Backquote a field plowed by a divine beast, it will grow great crops. This will definitely be good Celestina thought as she smiled happily and watched him. Lady Cell, I'll get the seedlings. Let me help you. Since this will be the first step. They went back to the carriage, and as she was taking the box with the seedlings, Hisu hurriedly stopped her. He told her that this wasn't the work of the Lord. But this wasn't the time to mind such things. This village didn't have sufficient people there for the helping hands were also lacking. Seeing that Celestina wouldn't change her mind, Hisu smiled dryly as he mentioned that it couldn't be helped then. They returned to the village to find that about half the plowing was done. Wow, that was fast. It's a small area. It's fine if it's within 25 meters of the great tree right? That's right. Of course, we had to consider that the great tree will grow even more hereafter and leave sufficient space for that. So what is this supposed to be? Mr. Gatz. He scratched his head as he muttered that it was impossible. Celestina heard that and wondered what had happened since nothing had really changed. The soil seems strange. Due to the lack of nutrition, the soil is usually very hard and dry, but the soil over here is soft. Is that so? She immediately realized that this was the effect of the great tree. The quality of the soil had changed due to the effect of the great tree, but the effect was only extended to a radius of 25 meters. Is this the power of the great tree? That's right. The great tree blesses us and watches over us. That's amazing. Gats was deeply moved as he watched the field with tears in the corner of his eyes. Celestina looked around and found that the children were looking. Let's plant the seedlings, after we finish plowing. Will everyone help us? Of course. I'll also do it. The children gathered around Celestina when she called out to them. She handed over the potato seedlings to them, which they happily accepted, and went towards the field. It was a small area, so the planting was finished quickly. Piro. The great tree had leveled up to level 2. Ah. Lady Cell. Woof. She was surprised by the sudden voice inside her head. Hisu and Toy watched her curiously. No, I was just thinking that it would be good to plant some flowers as well. Flowers? She inadvertently said that because she thought that it was a good idea, but that was enough to quell their curiosity. The condition to level up the great tree to level 2 was to plant vegetation around the great tree. That was something that could be easily done. She wanted to quickly open up the Asgaral system, but there were too many people around, so she decided to check it out later. Besides, she remembered clearly what happens when the great tree is at level 2. The reason that the great tree leveled up was that they planted vegetation near the great tree. The skill released at level 2 is sweet honey. This skill releases a sweet scent from the great tree and attracts butterflies. Once the tree levels up, bees and small animals are also attracted. Backquote with that, you'll be able to collect honey. In this world, honey is a luxury item. That's why by leveling up and doing beekeeping it will be greatly beneficial to this village. It seems to be progressing smoothly. Her face relaxed. Backquote how long will it take to take effect? As Celestina was thinking, Hisu called out. Butterflies. Four butterflies were surrounding the leaves of the great tree. It seems that the effect of the skill was displayed instantly. 
come to think of it Lady Cell. What happened here Sue? Celestina was thinking about what to do next in her village when Hisu who was pouring her some tea asked with concern. There is an evening party today, is it alright, if you don't prepare for it? A-H-H. Backquote I completely forgot about it. This is where the Valenus gets disqualified. No, it's not really disqualification. Isn't it better to be disqualified though? She was thinking. When she looked at the clock, she realized that there was sufficient time for her to prepare. That's good. Relieved, she thanked Hisu for reminding her. It's no good, if I only think about the village, I cannot forget my duties as the daughter of a Marquis. Point I'll call Anna. Yes. Please do. She sighed as Hisu left the room. Every year during this season, an evening party celebrating fertility is held at the royal castle. As the fianke of the prince, Celestina accompanies him as a partner. Moreover, this is the party where the heroine and the Valenus meet for the first time. The Valenus Celestina spills a drink onto the heroine's dress. After that when she tries to trip the heroine, her move backfires and Soratek interferes and promises to attend to the heroine. It was quite gloomy. Backquote right now I want to tend to the village, so it would be good if he were to break the engagement quickly. The more time that she spends in that event, the worse things get. It will become difficult for Celestina to find a new fianke, even if it's Soratek right now. Since she'll become someone who was dumped by the prince of the country, what will happen to me from here on? Even though she seemed peaceful on the outside, she was really anxious internally. Thinking about things going well for her she thought about the development in the village. She suddenly realized that the village didn't have a name. She had to receive permission from her father to name the village. I must think about it. That's what it is but. My naming sense this was a difficult task. She held her head. Ever since she reincarnated, she never had an opportunity to name anything. In her previous lifetime, she often named the game characters and territories but would often think about them for over 30 minutes with the game screen open in front of her. I'll discuss it with Hisu later on. She nodded to herself quietly. After the preparations for the evening party were safely complete, Sora Tech was in time to pick her up. Since the evening party was held at the royal castle it would have been fine for him to wait for her there she softly muttered. Anna seemed to have heard that because she smiled. It's the role of a man to escort a lady, it'll be fine to rely on him. After all Prince Soratek really cherishes Lady Celestina. Yes. When she entered the entrance hall, Soratek for waiting for her there. He was dressed in clothes that were deep blue and black. He seemed to look like a painting just by standing there. Backquote OHH. A real life Lord Soratek. She had seen Soratek in a variety of different clothing but this was the first time that she had seen him in clothes that were from the game event. Backquote I'll soon be dumped, so I should enjoy watching him right now. Soratek looked at her and cheerfully called out Cell. Thank you for coming to pick me up Lord Soratek. That's alright. I wanted to see you as soon as possible. The dress I gave you suits you very well. Celestina was wearing a lovely peach colored dress. It was a gift from Soratek. The parts of the dress that were embroidered lace went very well Soratek's clothing. Thank you a lord Soratek. It's really beautiful. Is, is that so? Thank you, Cell. Since she told him so honestly, Soratek seemed shy. He looked happy and his cheeks were tinted with a slight blush. Shall we go? Yes. The softy swaying carriage took them to the castle. They entered inside. Soratek gently took Celestina's hand and kissed it. People immediately noticed, but Celestina wouldn't be defeated. 
Back quote even though I'm not suitable for Lord Soratek. Several nobles came to greet the first Prince Soratek. Celestina smiled cheerfully by his side and looked around to see whether she could spot the heroine. Ah, there. She had beautiful pink hair that looked like a flower and she wore a beautiful white dress adorned with lovely ribbons. She was staring this way and Celestina immediately understood that she was watching Soratek. Anyone could tell that she was in love with him. It will be good if he were to quickly break his engagement with me and marry the heroine, Celestina thought. It wouldn't be enough to just look at him like that. It'll be good if she strikes a conversation with him first. Backquota, is it because I'm here that she cannot speak to him? Since the person she likes is with another woman it wasn't something the heroine would be able to handle. But the greetings weren't over, yet so Celestina couldn't leave Soratek's side. Soratek noticed Celestina's behavior and gently strokes her head. Sal. Yes? No, you look drowsy. Are you tired? Soratek looked worried as he gently asked her whether it was due to wind outside. Celestina was apologetic to receive his kindness, but she realized that this was a chance. If she separates from Soratek her and goes to the balcony or the courtyard then the heroine can approach him. Celestina immediately nods and tells Soratek that she would like to rest for a bit. Then let's go together. If it's really hard then we can get a room prepared so that you can rest. Ah, no. I'll be fine on my own Lord Soratek. There are a lot of people who wish to greet you. She was trying to tell him not to worry about her, but he looked at her and frowned. I can't leave my FMK alone when she is not feeling well can I? He told Celestina not to worry about anything as I found an opening through the crowd of people and guided her to the courtyard. Celestina felt the heroine watching them as Soratek gently escorted Celestina away. Are you alright? Yes. Soratek and Celestina went to the courtyard, sat down on a bench, and gazed at the sky. The bright starry sky seemed to match the fertility celebration perfectly. It was a natural sight. But she hadn't expected Soratek to come out with her. It should be fine to rest a little and head back inside she decided. While looking at the sky, Soratek started to speak. Come to think of it. Sal. I heard about it from the Marquis, that you're going to be managing the 7th district? Aren't you pushing yourself too much? I'm alright it was certainly startling in the beginning, but I'm sure that they also desire to live a normal lifestyle. Is that so? He must have probably heard that the people living in the slums of Harmel left to create a village of their own. Soratek was looking at Celestina with great concern. When she told him that she was planning to hold a festival near the village, Soratek replied happily that it sounds great. I would really like for you to guide me around Cell. A. But the village doesn't have anything at the moment. I was thinking about taking you there after working on it for a few years. However, she wouldn't be able to continue managing it if the great tree doesn't bloom within that period of time but there was no need to explicitly inform him of that. It would be a problem if the storyline were to change due to interference. Even if the place was developing, she couldn't take Prince Soratek there. The roads were dirty, there were no shops, and it was a far cry from a proper village. The only thing that she could proudly show was the fact that the great tree had sprouted, even though she didn't have any blessings. Back quote since it's the great tree, he would probably want to see it. I would like to see anything that Cell is working on. Lord Soratek. Soratek looked at Celestina lovingly and said that. He entangled his fingers into her white hair and enjoyed gently stroking it. Celestina was a little concerned 
that they may be misunderstood by the heroine, but she decided to let him do as he pleased without letting it bother her. For now, she had to think of a way to quickly return back inside. She wanted to return immediately, but they started talking, and saw a tech didn't seem to have any intention of returning back inside. She was worried. It was impossible to say that they should return inside in order to see the heroine quickly, but she couldn't come up with a better reason. Sora Tech inclined his head as he watched her worry. I'm sorry for dragging you along for so long even though you're tired. Ah, no point it's fine, because I'm your fiancé. This was also one of her duties as his fiancé. Backquote but, I somehow need to bring the heroine and Lord Sora Tech together. Lord Sora Tech, if you are absent for too long then the others will be troubled. Won't you return for a while? I want to stay here and relax with you Cell. Celesina tried to stand up, but Sora Tech's eyes seemed to appeal to her to stay put. She was troubled. He put his arms around her shoulder so she couldn't even get off the bench. When she was wondering what to do, she felt the bushes move. She realized that someone was there, and she looked towards the source of the sound. She noticed pink hair that resembled a flower. Celestina realized that it was the heroine. Ah, Lord Soratek. The heroine was looking this way, and smiling warmly just like a flower. Back quote you are. The heroine is really adorable point, just as expected I'm defeated without knowing. She wanted to scream out. Backquote did she come here to look for us? That possibility was huge. Anyway, she had to greet her as Sora Tex Fianke. It's our first time meeting. I'm Celestina Rinklet. I'm Miria Saltimal. It's my first time meeting you Lady Celestina. It's been a while Lord Soratek. Yeah, are you doing well now? Yes. Come to think of it, the heroine was set to have a weak body. She looked at Miria. Soratek seemed to worry about her, then it would have been better if he wasn't here with her. Were they distant, because this was an evening party? Soratek introduced Miria, since Celestina didn't know her. Lady Miria had been taking treatment at her maternal home up until recently. She doesn't seem to have any friends, so it would be nice if both of you could get along well. Of course. Thank you Lady Celestina. I'm really glad that I got to speak to you. Her smile resembled a flower and she looked adorable, thought Celestina. Why did she carry her glass of wine with her and come out to the courtyard? Miria noticed Celestina's line of sight and smiled awkwardly. I'm still unfamiliar with this place, it's embarrassing. That's okay, you can always come and speak to me. You may speak to me about anything. Thank you Lady Celestina. Backquote in order to avoid the bad ending, I would listen to any unreasonable request. Lord Sora Tech, can I have a dance? A. He saw Miria smile adorably and looked at Celestina reflexively. Sora Tech wanted to dance with Celestina and not Miria, but Celestina interpreted it as him not being able to dance with Miria because Celestina was present. Backquote AHH point it would not be good for him to dance the first dance with someone other than his fiancé Celestina thought that he was concerned about that. I'll rest here for a while so please go ahead and dance. Well, thank you Lady Celestina. Cell. I don't intend to leave you here alone and go back inside when you're feeling unwell. Even if Celestina was alright with it. Sora Tech wouldn't budge. But if he stayed here with her then his relationship with the heroine wouldn't deepen. She was wondering what to do when she suddenly had an idea. Backquote that's right, I'm a villainess. In that case, it would be fine to act like one. She looked at the wine that Miria was holding. The contents were still intact. She hadn't really drunk from her glass. She would spill that on Miria's dress. 
so that the two of them could leave from here. With that, the two of them would unavoidably be alone together. It was a good idea she realized as she slowly stood up. She had to do it as naturally as possible. Lord saw a tech. I'm alright so let the three of us head back in together. It will also be more encouraging for Lady Miria that way. Point yes. Miria happily nodded at Celestina's words. She nodded happily looking adorable just like a small animal. You would certainly feel like helping her out. Well, I'll be spilling the wine on her now though. Then, let's go. She quickly took Miria's hand, as if wanting to walk. Sora Tech thought that it couldn't be helped, and got up when Celestina casually pulled on Miria's arm with some strength. Kyra. Backquote Yosh. There was a sound in the wine spilled onto Miria's dress. Some of it fell onto her clothes as well. Although that wasn't in her plan, but it should be fine. A-H-H. I'm really sorry Lady Miria addresses, since a deep colored wine spilled onto her dress, there was a prominent stain. The mission was a success. Celestina quickly started to walk, after telling Miria that let's go to room, when Sora Tech pulled on her arm. Back quote A. Eh? Take Lady Miria to the guest room immediately. Ask a maid to prepare a new dress for her. A. A. Sora Tech, who quickly grasped the situation, put an arm around Celestina's shoulder, and began to give out instructions. Celestina assumed that Sora Tech would be the one, to take Miria to the guest room. Backquote I didn't expect this kind of development though. Anyway, he was embracing Celestina, and holding her, as if she was a princess. Are you okay Cell? Yes. Barely anything spilled over me so I'm alright. I'm glad that you weren't hurt. Let's get you changed quickly. A. Sora Tech left Miria to the maids, and took Celestina along with him. Backquote wait, that's not how it's supposed to be. Celestina wanted to cry out, but she went along with him patiently. Sora Tech carried Celestina like a princess and took her to the guest room. Celestina impatiently said, Lord Sora Tech, is it alright if you don't escort Lady Miria? Why didn't he escort the heroine? Why did he escort me the Valenus instead? There was great chaos inside Celestina's mind. Celestina had spilled the wine on the heroine's dress. Isn't he supposed to be worried about her according to the fantasy game right? Backquote there was certainly that kind of development on the game. Then why is he escorting me? She was sure that it was the heroine that was to be carried like a princess. Sora Tech watched Celestina with a doubtful look. I've asked the maids to take care of Lady Miria so that's fine, isn't it? Sal, aren't you feeling cold? Since you got drenched. I'll quickly have a new dress delivered so please wait for a bit. No, only a little bit of wine spilled over me so I'm fine. But the dress that you gifted to me was stained. I'm really sorry. Don't worry about such things. The original plan was to spill the wine only on the heroine though. Backquote. Ah, is that so? She noticed it once she came here. The reason why Sora Tech escorted her, and not the heroine was, because Celestina spilled wine on herself as well. In the game, only the heroine's dress was soiled. The only victim in the game, was the heroine so there was no reason to choose her between the heroine and the villainess. Backquote in other words, it was my mistake. Celestina sighed inside her mind. Backquote no matter how much he likes the heroine, since his fiancé's clothes also got soiled, he had to give her priority, since he also had social obligations as a prince. Next time she swore to only soil the heroine's dress, even though this was an event that would bring them closer, but due to her mistake in spilling the wine, it was ruined. If she could correct the trajectory somehow it would be great. 
she was thinking of a way. Sora Tech would certainly remain by her side till she finished changing into a fresh set of clothing. It was a little bit of waiting. Point the roses are beautiful aren't they? NN. Ah, I had the maids decorate the room with them. She suddenly noticed the vase, and spoken out loud, but Sora Tech cheerfully smiled. Sora Tech often gave Celeste in a red roses. In fact, roses were the only flowers that Sora Tech ever gave Celeste in a. Most often they were red, but they were also white or pink occasionally. Come to think of it, the guest room that is prepared for me is always decorated with roses. It's because I ask for it. A. Well, the castle does have a rose garden she lightly thought, but point something was strange. Do you give the directions for the decorations of the guest room? That wasn't the job of a prince, Celestina curiously thought. She thought that it would be fine to leave it to the maid or the head maid. Only the guest room, that you use sell. Mine. She blinked her eyes, when he said that. It wasn't a response she expected. Sora Tex added softly. Yeah. Sell you like roses right. You were really happy, when I gave them to you as a present a long time back. I think it's good to give roses to you. Don't tell me, do you dislike them? His eyes looked anxious as Celestina inclined her head. It wasn't that she dislikes them. If she really had to choose then she would say that she likes them, but ever since she recovered her memories of her previous life, looking at roses in the garden of her mansion increased her stress levels. I see, that's great. Seeing Sora Tech relax, she realized the reason why Sora Tech brought her roses. She always thought that he found it troublesome to think about which flowers to give, so he had settled on roses. But her FMK seemed to think about her a lot more than she knew. Backquote then those flowers that he gave to the heroine at the flower shop were at the request of Lady Miria. She was thinking about the incognito date that Sora Tech and the heroine had in town the other day. It should be fine to ask about it a little. Lord Sora Tech, have you ever bought a bouquet other than roses before? NN? What? Are you concerned about that? Sensing Celestina's interest in him, he was really happy and his mouth loosened. Point I have often given flowers. But I've decided to give roses to you only Celestina. Basically, when I need to give flowers I make it with something other than roses. Is that so? Sora Tech wasn't aware that the usually unconcerned Celestina was concerned about roses to that extent. Maybe because Sora Tech was feeling guilty, but he started to explain to Celestina about that time. I coincidentally met Lady Miria in town the other day. I left it to the flower shop owner to make a bouquet that day and he chose various kinds of flowers to make one. Did you give a bouquet to Lady Miria? Yeah, because she helped me find an ornament to gift to sell. Ah, it was already too late by the time he realized it. Celestina wondered if it would have been better not to ask. But Sora Tech quickly let out and back quote oh damn. It was meant to be a secret till I gave it to you. But I accidentally point I asked Lady Miria to bring me to a shop that was popular amongst women and the bouquet was in thanks for that. That's how it was. She had always thought that it was a date, but the truth turned out to be something completely different. To think that all of that was done. In order to give her a present, 